Hello to all and welcome to Watchers TV and today we have quite a special video report to share with you as we are going extravaganza galore because it's not every day that we're going to have five Jacob & Co. Tourbillon watchers visiting us here at the Watchers Club in Geneva. So we won't go on all the details of each watch, they aren't real novelties per se, but they are spectacular. So enjoy the show and yes, I know that some may have their own thoughts on Jacob & Co. watches, but seriously, these are really quite a special time-telling machine with their own twist and I can only salute the audacity of coming up with such objects. It's different, it's fun, it's extravagant, but it's nevertheless extremely well engineered and executed. So let's start with the Astronomia Casino with its unique and large 47mm case, 27.9 in height, yes you heard me right, made out of 18 karat rose gold but it encases so much in the inside. Everything is in motion and it is quite exceptional. You have four branches and at the tip of each branch well you will find something exciting but what is additionally amazing is that these branches turn on themselves around the central axis in 10 minutes. It's constantly moving ever so slowly when you look at your watch Watch, you will never see the same thing. Okay, on a watchmaking standpoint and opposite of each other on these branches, well on one side you have an hour and minute indicator and the dial will always remain in the correct position. 12 o'clock will always be on top of the dial even though it moves around in 10 minutes. Opposite on this same branch, well you have a dual axis tourbillon escapement. On the other two branches, well, you will find two animation, one dear to the brand uh, with this signature one carat faceted diamond globe rotating on itself in 30 seconds, actually called the Jacob Cut with a total of 288 facets reflecting light in a rather mesmerizing way. On the other side, you have another globe, the Earth, which is also rotating on itself in 30 seconds and made out of magnesium, shining land surfaces and blue lacquered water. Something important to grasp is that uh, we are talking extremely intricate watchmaking mechanisms and despite being uh, some kind of incredible kinetic sculpture, this is still a watch and needs to be accurate and reliable, reason why it is very important that the weight found on each side of these branches need to balance out to the very milligram. As you can see, there is no apparent crown to wind it or set the time on the side of the watch, but instead you have these 18 uh, carat rose gold bows on the back case. Okay, but since uh, this is the casino version and we're talking roulette, well, on the upper part of this incredible ever moving mechanism, well, you will find a nicely executed gold turret similar to what you see in a real roulette. Naturally here, this is not how you're going to spin it around, but instead, you have a pusher found on the flank of the case at uh, 8 o'clock and by lying down your watch on a flat surface well, you can actually activate the roulette by simply pushing on it and off it goes. Les jeux sont faits, rien ne va plus. You just have to wait a few seconds for the ceramic ball to find its place and hopefully you did bet black even in 28. Quite amazing, right? It's playful and fun, but it doesn't take away the seriousness behind it. This is proper watchmaking. The level of finishing is really uh, very high. The polishing, the beveling, the execution in general is all the way up there for this timepiece limited to 88 pieces. Okay, next timepiece with the oil pump. And by quickly looking at it, well, I guess you can easily get uh, where this watch uh, got its name from. But this is no static display that would be uh, way too easy. This is an automaton watch and demonstrates once again the original and rather playful take on watchmaking by the brand. This watch holds a double axis tourbillon found at uh, 6 o'clock and the rest of this watch's movement is hidden behind this honeycomb structure. So you can just about guess some of the gear trains and other parts found beneath it. Coming back to this tourbillon, it rotates on itself in 60 seconds on the first axis and in 2.5 minutes on the second axis and I quite like how it is held into place on this rather large and deep plaque going through almost the entire dial as if it was underground where the petrol is. So the hour and minute indication can be seen at 9 o'clock and more or less at 3 o'clock well you have a power reserve indicator for this manually wound watch holding 60 hours of power reserve. So to wind it uh, you have a crown on the back case and that's also where you will be able to set the time. 
So the decor really portrays this world of oil fields with these uh, tubes, containers and pipeline looking features. And in the middle you have this uh, derrick standing tall and linked in some way to the hour and minute dial. So let's activate it and to do so, well you have a pusher uh, found on the side of the case at uh, 2 o'clock and by simply pushing, well the animation comes to life. This timepiece uh, comes in this uh, 18 karat rose gold case, the 49 mm in width and 20 mm in height. You will also find aperture on the side and there is also a white gold version, both being limited to 88 pieces. Okay, next one with the Opera Godfather, an almost dancing music making machine giving you time at the same time, also limited to 88 pieces. The case is made out of rose gold, it's 49mm in width and 17mm in height and again you find this dome sapphire glass which enables to use this available volume to its maximum considering all that is happening inside. In the very center of the timepiece you will find a miniature hand-painted figurine of the Godfather himself in reference to the super famous movie starring Marlon Brando, the brilliantly directed trilogy by Mr. Francis Ford Coppola and the brand uh, partnered with uh, Paramount Pictures in order to use this. Around the Godfather you have uh, two uh, rose gold uh, plated spiked uh, cylinders you generally find in a music box. The combs that actually produces the notes are hidden behind this uh, grand piano on one side and on the other one hidden underneath a gold but black lacquered part with the original Godfather film logo. Each comb has 18 teeth, so a total of 36, which will interact with these small spikes and generating the music. But before activating it, well, let me add that we are again talking serious watchmaking with this 97 component triple axis tourbillon. It spins around uh, these three axes in 24 seconds for the first one, the second one in 8 seconds and 30 seconds for the last one. And just by itself, I mean, this is already quite a show to observe. On the opposite side uh, you have the hour and minute dial with this uh, nice uh, sunray design but let's now activate it and listen to it because this gets even better and to do so well you simply push this pusher found at 10 o'clock. Okay, you certainly recognize the theme songs from the movie and you must have also seen that this uh, not only triggers this music box feature, but it actually makes the entire dial rotate around the Godfather himself. But at the same time, and also you probably noticed this, but again the hour and minute dial always remain in a straight position. You can read the time at any given time during the animation and this is no small detail. This is a manually hand-worn watch and to do so, well you use the golden violin shaped crankshaft found on the side of the case. This makes it quite easy and practical to do so and once fully wound you have 50 hours of power reserve. And to set the time well you use this uh, 18 karat lift out bow on the case back. Okay let's push the bar even a bit more with the twin turbo furious carbon and to put it shortly this is a dual triple axis tourbillon minute repeater mono pusher chronograph and just saying it uh, makes me feel almost dizzy I mean what a program one made out of 832 components and an additional 88 components for the case alone which is made out of carbon actually forged carbon and its size is quite impressive I mean 57 millimeter in length 52 millimeter in width and 17 millimeter in height. But let's start with these uh, two multi-axis tourbillons. As you can see, they may seem to be advancing in a slightly odd manner, but this is due to their fast rotation speed. As the inner cage rotates in 24 seconds, the intermediary in only 8 seconds, that's extremely fast, and the outer one in 72 seconds. And there are some mechanical constraints which triggers this behavior. So one of the tourbillons regulates timekeeping and the other one is for the chronograph. Between these two tourbillons you can see here the power reserve indicator looking a bit like a fuel gauge and this timepiece holds uh, 50 hours of power reserve. It is a manually hand wound and you do so uh, as well as set the time with this uh, foldable uh, crankshaft on the side of the watch. 
But as mentioned, this timepiece also holds a minute repeater mechanism, actually a decimal minute repeater, chiming the time on demand by activating this lever on the side. You will first hear the hours, then the tens of minutes, and finally the actual minutes. So let's try it. Okay, but the show, if I may say so, doesn't stop there because this uh, watch also holds a chronograph function, a monopusher chronograph, meaning that you activate it, stop it and reset it only by pressing the button on the crown. But you have an additional cool feature related to the world of sports cars and the timing of hot track laps with uh, this uh, reference time option. So let's say you just perform your lap in 1 minute and 25 seconds. Well, in that case, you use the crank, turn it around until you display this information found at the 6 o'clock hour mark with this uh, minute and seconds display. Now that you are set, well, you can activate the chrono when you cross uh, the start line, go flat out on your new hot lap and stop it when you cross the finish line. Okay, probably safer if somebody did this for you, but uh, you get the idea. And then you will be able to see immediately if you've improved your time. In this case, and since we drove brilliantly, well, we managed to go five seconds faster and the chrono second hand indicates this. So had we gone slower, the second hands would be in the red zone and we don't want that, right? So with this uh, feature, you can measure reference time as up to 5 minutes and 59 seconds, uh, which would be either a very long track or maybe that you are just very slow. But like any chronograph, and if you're not using this uh, reference time function, well, you will find a minute sub-dial counter at 3 o'clock measuring up to 30 minutes and opposite you will find a small second indicator at 9 o'clock. So one last thing to be added is the particularity of this uh, dome sapphire glass and I can promise you that uh, this is pretty complicated to manufacture and just accentuates this uh, timepiece uh, uniqueness. But I guess uh, one can grasp this pretty easily. I mean, this kind of piece speaks by itself. And for info, it is limited this time to 18 pieces. It's already quite exuberant, but if you want to go one step further, well, there are baguette diamond set versions coming either white or rose gold, just say. Okay, final timepiece with the epic SF24 tourbillon and SF standing for split flaps and you'll very easily understand why in a few seconds. It's a GMT and it's extremely easy and very instinctive to use. It's a self-winding watch and holds uh, 48 hours of power reserve and is limited to 101 pieces. It comes in a rather complex to manufacture 18 karat rose gold case of 45 millimeter in width. But then you have this uh, very unusual tube-like uh, feature on top of it where you will find the second time indication. Local time is found on this uh, slightly off-centered black dial and this leaves uh, plenty of room for this apparent flying tourbillon turning on itself in 60 seconds seen at 10 o'clock. Okay, let's get to the fun part and I guess that I'm not alone but I remember too well when I was a kid going to the Geneva airport waiting for some guest or simply taking uh, the plane with my family and how much I adore watching these huge board with uh, flight arrival and departure information and these immense flapping mechanism each time an information change well it was just uh, fascinating and the best was when the entire board was updated and everything was moving like crazy with these uh, distinctive uh, sounds uh, flap 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 just loved it so when I get to see a similar feature in a watch, well, of course, it brings back uh, those cool memories and again demonstrates uh, the emotional dimension a timepiece can carry. And that's why we love mechanical watchmaking. As simple as that. So in this example, I've aligned both time zones to Geneva time where we are now. And now by pressing this button, time zone will uh, simply instantaneously flip by increments of one hour. So what's the current time in Tokyo? Well, I just have to continue pushing it till I get there. And uh, now the indication of the minute can still be seen on the main dial. Just that simple. And if I'm traveling and let's say I'm in New York, well, I can either choose to have the main dial uh, still set on my original time zone and see uh, New York time on the flaps or do the opposite main dial New York and then use the flaps to see the current time in Geneva. 
And as you can see, the hour marker on the main dial is adjusted by one hour increments. And this uh, indeed makes it very easy to set while on the go. Okay, so I will put uh, this final watch on the side and I hope you uh, enjoyed this. I mean, again, for us, it was quite a privilege to have all these uh, five watches here. Not every day that this is going to happen. Hope you enjoyed this. All the very best to you and viva crazy watchmaking.